What's up, guys? Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch here in Prague, and you're watching Metal Shop TV. It's, uh, as far as a rebirth goes, this album, we went through so much, uh, so many problems on the last record when we did Justice For None. Uh, Ivan and I were both at the height of our own active addictions, and there was a lot of turmoil. We had the um, lawsuit with the label that we were going through. It was just not a good time. We were, we were fighting amongst each other. Um, it, was, it was just bad, and then... I checked into rehab. I've been checked into rehab right after I did. So I'm at 24 months. He's at 23 months. So not only has it been a rebirth of Death Punch, it's been a rebirth of us collectively as individuals. Uh, so many different things have gone on in all of our personal lives that life has has done a 180 on so many different levels. And you know, people have asked, would I change anything that we've gone through? I definitely would not because ha without having gone through all the craziness that we'd gone through, we wouldn't be able to appreciate um, at the, the incredible spot that we're in right now. I, I doubted it a lot, many, many times. There was never a time, there were lots of times. Uh, a, a lot of those were, were caught on camera um, because the, some of the stuff that was going on backstage spilled out onto the stage a, a couple of times. Certainly not uh, our proudest moments as a band. And, um, you know, when you've got stuff going on uh, within the head of someone who, I mean, me too, uh, you know, you've got so many, so many chemicals altering who you really are. It's like, how do you control any of that? And how the hell do you control someone else going through that? Um, it felt like... Uh, the future of this band and personal futures as well were, were all kind of in, in an imbalance many, many times. So um, yeah, there was, there was several times that we definitely questioned, but at the same time, we've gone through so many of those things before that, that propelled us and, and became fuel for the fire that burns this five finger death punch. And uh, it's all of those things going on those those things turned into the uh, the catalyst that made me and I even both get help, and uh, it, it could not be better in Death Punch right now had it not gone through the the evolution and the change and the, the you know all that that we did over the last two years. Not almost as a member, he he might as well be a member of Five Finger Death Punch because uh, he is able to to take five very different personalities and have them work together in ways that we might not be capable of doing on our own. He's, he's the, uh, the sage, the guide, Mr. the wizard. He's even got the beard. If anyone's seen in uh, Kevin Churko, he's that wizardly qualities, even facially as well. Uh, and almost as old too, Kevin, so gotcha. Um, yeah, he's, he's great. He'll, he'll take an idea that we have. It'll be a riff that maybe isn't standing out on its own, but then when he hears it, he hears it with something else that we've done and is able to kind of be like, oh, what about over here? As a producer, his job is to, to, to make us make the best songs that we possibly can. And uh, once you hear Fate, you will see that uh, he is doing it as we are at a level that uh, has never been done in Five Figure Death Punch before. Uh, if I had not stopped on February 3rd, I would not be here today. I actually had a conversation with my girlfriend, uh, had about 18 months actually, and we were talking about what would life be like just for us, between her and I, if, if I had continued uh, drinking and, and doing drugs. And I was telling her, I was like, you would be different because you would be much more, much more fucked up than you are now. She didn't really get fucked up. She's, she's a normal person, which kills me because she's able to do it and, and stop. I can't. And uh, she always tried to keep up with me all the time. She's a 110-pound uh, young lady, and I'm a 225-pound right now, I think, dude. And she would keep up, you know, drink for drink for drink. I also had cocaine propelling me as well. So she's trying to keep up with a dude twice her size, also on blow. And uh, it, it was not working. So um, I said that she would be different in that aspect. And then I thought about it for a second. And this was the 18 months so sober. And I, I was like, man, 
I really think I would be dead. It, and it hit me. I was like, 18 months, I would be dead. That is absolutely crazy to me. And the place that I'm in now with the outlook I have on life and the perspective and all the work that I've done to, to correct some of the things I had inside that needed to be worked on that I was covering up with drugs and alcohol. The drugs and alcohol weren't the problem. It was definitely some, some inside stuff that I needed to deal with. Um, but to think that I was, I was that close to death uh, because I couldn't stop drinking, I couldn't stop doing blow, uh, it's, it was a really sobering thought in sobriety at that point that uh, I was that close to dying. So thank God that last moment hit me and uh, I had that moment of clarity to call my buddy Greg and have him drive me to rehab because had I not had that split second decision to, to text him and get me, him to take me to rehab, I would not be here uh, on, the, on this camera today. <laughs>
first one. Yes, I do, actually. It was called The Happening. It was at Lafayette High School uh, back in Lexington, Kentucky. I was in a band called Sarcophagus back then, and uh, I was only singing back then. I wasn't, uh, there was a bass player that was much better than me, probably still is better than me, Todd Snowden. And um, I was singing, and there was, it, was, it was packed. I've always been the guy that, that was friends with everybody. I talked to every single person throughout the school. Didn't matter. Always the charismatic dude that, that is always hanging out. So I had a lot of friends there, and the, the building was packed, and we're doing selfies back there. Got it. See, I got a good eye for the camera, too. Um, yeah, so I would say half the school was there, probably, if, if not more. Yeah, and it was a big school. <laughs> What would I be if I weren't a musician? Pissed. That's what I would be. <laughs> um, man, I, I, I actually, before music, I was studying to build an elementary school education uh, major. I wanted to be a, a positive male role model for, for kids who grew up in houses without male, male role models. And uh, I got to the student teaching part of that and had to deal with the parents, and I was like, I'm out of here. I ain't dealing with this stuff anymore. So it wasn't the kids. It was the uh, the the parents that were uh, sending their kids into school, and you had to get through so many behavioral problems because of things that weren't being done at home. There was no time to educate. So I ended up leaving Kentucky, moving out to Vegas, and uh, now I'm being a, a positive male role model for for many more kids than would have been possible in uh, in an elementary school setting. So still doing, uh, still achieving the same goals, just on a different platform at a different level. <laughs>